Clarence Corner, I have Clarence Bass back. We've had a lot of requests for him. He's got a world of knowledge, and uh, every time I talk to him, I learn something, and every time you guys hear him, you learn something for sure. So we're back for part two, and Clarence, thank you for being here with me. Hey, Rick, thanks for having me back. Uh, I'm gonna have you back as long as we can go. We'll both be in the retirement homes, we'll still be talking back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your new article. Tell me about it. I, I just posted an article talking about peaking for competition. Mm -hmm. And I used as an example my last competition, which, which was the past 40 Mr. America back in 1980. Right. And I was in fantastic shape. I, my body fat was low. I looked great uh, before going in. But when I, when I got on stage, I just lost all my cuts. And I explained there how that I was very careful uh, that I had heard that you need to cut back on sodium because you don't want to be retaining water. Right. And I thought I was doing that, but then it was there at the the Hilton in Atlanta, and I was eating on the on the on the snack on the uh, salad bar, so I was able to see what they were preparing for me. I was trying to be very careful not to get anything that had, had sodium, but I had in the, in leading up to it at home, I was eating eating uh, yogurt. And I knew that that was relatively low in sodium. They didn't have yogurt, but they had cottage cheese. Yeah. So I thought that would be a good option. Right. But it turned out cottage cheese has eight times as much sodium as as yogurt. Really? I never knew that. And I looked terrible. I didn't look terrible, but it, I, I definitely was not as sharp as I could have been. Do you think it's from and the cottage cheese? With the, I was eating cottage cheese breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, okay. That was my, my protein source, and I right. thought that was a good, a good way to keep my sodium down. I never add sodium, never add salt to anything, so no. I never really worried about it. Me neither. But fortunately, I, I placed second, and so I was out of the running for the overall Fast 40 Mr. America uh, contest. But I had schedule, I had photo sessions scheduled up in California for the next day and the following week. So I resolved to do something about that and cut back on the on, on, on the sodium, uh, drink a little more water to flush the sodium out. And on my website, we just posted a new article, and it, it, it's called Peaking for Competition, Waterlogged in, in, in Atlanta. And it shows the pictures of me. We, we didn't get anything on stage, but the next morning, and then I show you some pictures of me uh, about a day and a half later, and 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 it's just like night and day. By getting that excess sodium out of my system, and then we did another picture. Uh, Bill Reynolds had a place called Reynolds Rock where he'd taken pictures of all kinds of guys. Right. And I I just look fantastic, and we have the pictures there that shows the difference. Right. And don't we, people don't realize that just within a couple of days you can make a tremendous difference in how you look. And you know, interestingly, after the last photo shoot, uh, we went out and I, Bill Reynolds and, and uh, my wife and I and our, our boy and his girlfriend uh, went out to dinner. I didn't eat anything out of out of the ordinary, but I, I did have a couple of desserts and. I had desserts at, at Zucky's on the way back. Oh, sure. When I got back into the into the hotel room. Man, my vine, my veins were just popping out every place. And I thought, man, I thought I looked really good on Reynolds Rock, but I could look even better. So when we went home, I we Carol and I scheduled another shoot on Saturday and called the photographer. Actually, we'd never used him before, but they, they did a fantastic job. So we have the pictures of that, and that's when I was eating Drink, getting a little more water, getting some carbohydrates, but still avoiding um, avoiding anything with sodium. And I think that probably was was better than the earlier photos. And then also, I have a, I was I was, was forty two years old then, and I we have another series of photos taken eighteen years later when I was sixty, and I had a lot of photos taken during that period of time, but I had kind of refined the way to do it. And I didn't. I, instead of restricting my my water intake, I drank more to to flush the right. sodium out, and I was very careful not to eat sodium. 
And I did have some car, you know, I always eat a balanced diet. I never have cut way back on the carbs. And I made sure to eat a, a meal with carbs, with low volume, high carbs that have honey in them, some other things in it. And we had the pictures, the pictures there. And I think those pictures at 60 may be some of the best photos I've ever had taken. So you have in this one article, the pictures from the Atlanta contest, pictures a day later, right. pictures a couple of days later, and then at the end of the week. And it just shows what a tremendous difference you can make in one day. And of course, you have to be ready, you have to be lean before you're leading up to that. So that there's another stage that you have to go through. Well, it's in stages, like you say. Now, if you're not watching your carbs and you're not leaning down, will the lack of sodium make a big difference or will it make any difference at all? Oh, yes, I think that, well, you have to get the sodium out of your body. Yeah. But you, what, you, what the sodium does, eating salt, it gets the water it, it is, is outside of the cell and between the, the muscle cells and, and the skin, so it flattens you out. You want you want your muscle is about seventy percent water. Right. You want but you want the muscle inside your your cells so you get fullness but still have that cut look. I'm really glad you brought that up because I just had a blood test about two weeks ago and they told me I had too much water outside my cells, outside my arteries, outside my muscle. Yet my sodium apparently was low, so we weren't quite sure what was going on there. But I am holding water, so I went on a. Uh, Max I blood pressure medication, which is a diuretic to lose the water. And it hasn't all come out yet because you always retain a little bit around your belly. That's the hardest part to get rid of for me. I suppose, I suppose there might be other things going on that would make you retain yeah. what besides just getting excess sodium, maybe a kidney function thing or something like that. Well, everything came out okay, but I, I don't add salt to my foods at all. But when you eat in restaurants, they add salt to your food. So right. you don't really have a lot of control unless you just don't eat there. What would you what, go ahead. What I said in the article, you don't want it, you want to see everything you're eating. So you know if you stick with foods the way they come in nature, mm -hmm. nothing added, nothing subtracted. Almost all whole foods are low in sodium. They're high in potassium, low in sodium. That's what you want. Right. So, so, so it's, it's eating the, the whole foods that fill you up not giving you too many calories and keeping your sodium down, particularly there at the end. It's only in the last week where I drank more water, right. plus the sodium out and be extra careful with, with the sodium intake. Uh, I never knew the cottage cheese had that much sodium. I, I guess I should look on the label. Is there such a thing as a low sodium cottage cheese? I don't know. <laughs> but I know just the regular cottage cheese. Of course, it's a concentrated they're, all the water is out. It's a concentrated food. Right. Quite a bit different than, than whole milk or, or or yogurt. So I, I think it's the concentration yeah. uh, that, that's causing the problem. I know I've seen Bill Pearl. I know Bill Pearl that he likes cottage cheese and, and favors cottage cheese. Yeah. I don't think he does it before a contest, but that's one of the things that made me think that the cottage cheese on that on that salad bar there in the hotel would be a good move. And it turned out to be a, a bad move, but it really made the point about really what the key thing you have to do to get your cuts to come out and at the contest or for a photo shoot beyond getting your body fat very low. That's very interesting. What other things have sodium that you would cut out? If you're someone who's watching this and they say, okay, I, I try to eat a higher protein, low carb diet. Now, when it comes to sodium, what foods do I need to look out for? Well, I think almost anything that comes the way it is in nature that you don't have anything added. The thing you want to be careful about is sauces. They all have sodium. Yeah. You want to be careful of omelets because when they make in the omelet, they're going to add they're going to add salt to it. So you want to stay away from mixtures and stick with whole foods, as I say, with no, with nothing added and nothing subtracted. And pretty much across, even whole milk is fine. Uh, well, the whole milk, if you think about it, is a whole food, while uh, low-fat milk is a, is a processed food. Right. Now, here's another question since you brought that up. Uh, when I go out and I'm out with people or if I'm a girlfriend or people like that, I always want to get something that's low in fat. Let's go get low-fat yogurt. Let's go get low-fat this. I was always under the, the feelings that low-fat meant more carbs. So I don't really want low-fat. I want just regular, but I'd rather have less carbs, less sugar. 
Does that make sense? I think that's absolutely right, and that's something that, that, the, that the people that are setting the nutrition guidelines have just kind of realized. They kept talking about this low-fat eating. Yeah. Low-fat eating turns out to be very high carbohydrates, and it's not good carbohydrates. It's, it's refined carbohydrates, and then the refined carbohydrates becomes more of a problem than the fat. Right. And as a matter of fact, if you stick with the good fats, the fats, uh, the vegetable fats, fats that aren't refined, stay away from trans fats, and the good fats are good for you. Uh, tell me what trans fats are for our viewers. Well, trans fats are the fats that generally come in processed, processed foods or processed fats. Uh, almost any, any, uh, I'm not thinking of the right word, but, but in, in, in any processed food, foods that are that are in a box mm -hmm. are likely to have, have fat added, and the process the trans fats are fats that are that are made to, for their shelf life and so on. I so, see. And so, what are the good fats? Fish is certainly a good fat. I think the fish, the, 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 the fat in eggs, the fat in whole milk, yeah. which is still controversial. Yeah, but I, I, I just, I, I had uh, skim milk that I drank for for decades, and just recently I read about a study where that the fat in whole milk was good. Yeah, I started drinking more whole milk, and my HDL, the good cholesterol, it's been good all the time, but it actually got up into the 80s. What they want you to have a, a HDL cholesterol over 40. And mine has been in 60 right along, and then I got up to 70s when I added the the, uh, the whole milk. I got up into the 80s, and also I, I think that's that's a good food in in terms of something that fills you up and makes you feel satisfied without giving you too many calories. And it's you need it in a regular in a diet where you're trying to to cut your your body fat down. Yeah. It's a, it's a good idea to include some fat because the fat makes the food stay in your stomach longer and so you're more satisfied. You don't have to eat again so soon. This is true. And that's something that I learned relatively recently that, that it's important to have the fat in the diet, good fat. Most of my fat comes from fish, uh, eggs, and, and some vegetable oils. Vegetable oils are also good fat. Most of them are mono uh, polyunsaturated. What about avocado? I think avocado is super good. Okay. I, I'm, no salt on it, though. What's that? No salt on it. No, I don't use salt on anything. I know I, I have friends and family that will get their food, and the first thing they do is grab the salt and salt it before they even taste it. I said, why are you doing that? Because basically what they like is the taste of the salt. They don't care about the food. And so it ruins their flavor because you, you just don't add salt without tasting if it needs it or not. Some people have that habit. And then you see these signs, like you say, yogurt, low, low fat this, low fat that. And the general public thinks, well, if I don't eat fat, I'm going to lose fat. But basically, you're going to gain fat because you're eating the carbohydrates, which is going to be stored as fat. That, that's exactly right. And the same thing on, on the salt. Remember, I took our son to, I didn't go to McDonald's, but we took, he was getting ready to go to school. Never had been to McDonald's. So we wanted to take him to McDonald's so he wouldn't be out of it when he got into class. Yeah. Now, what what startled me is McDonald's people were sitting down this food that's already high fat and dumping salt on it yeah. uh, before they as you say before they even tasted it and of course salt is an appetite it stimulates your appetite same way with sugar foods that are salty uh, foods that are sweet you tend to eat more of them well I ordered an omelet for lunch this is really funny because you had mentioned Zucchi's delicatessen and I lived about five blocks from Zucchi's back in the 70s so I ate there quite a bit. Arnold and a bunch of us guys would go around 11 o'clock at night. We'd get cheese omelets with cottage cheese because it was a good source of protein. I was really lean at that time, and I wasn't really aware of sodium, but I was definitely aware of carbs. So I figured the omelet and the cottage cheese is good. It lasts me through the night, and we're ready to go. Now that you said that they use salt in it, I guess if you go into a restaurant, you can ask for an omelet and say, please do not add salt to it. Am I right? Yes, but I wouldn't trust them. No. Because <laughs> they, they want to make it so it tastes good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, you tell me, Rick. On a salt-free diet, you have to have it this way or whatever. I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do. On, on the on the salad bar there in Atlanta, the, the the chef was right there would make the omelet right there in front of you, and I had soft-boiled eggs so I could see what he was doing. I knew there was no salt. Right. 
I would have been more leery about it if I if he wanted to make a omelet for me. No, I agree. I think you're absolutely right. It's uh, it's it's good to know because people who watch the show they think. A lot of them have bad habits of eating, and, and uh, it's like so many, like I said, it's low-fat this and low-fat milk and low-fat guys. He's, I don't want that. I'd rather have the regular deal and forget about the fat and just lower the carbs. Um, I, think, I think that's exactly right. I think something else that people don't understand is that when you, you, when you reduce your body fat way down, it becomes harder and harder to lose the fat because the fat becomes more important to your body from an evolutionary standpoint, we're made, our bodies were, were made for a time when, when there was feast or famine, there was a lot of food, or there wasn't very much food. So we're made when food is available to eat as much as you can. And then but when you're in a, in a starvation situation, you're, you're, you're made to, uh, your, your body stores more fat. Right. Stores more fat. So you can actually, by cutting your, your, your calorie intake and, and, and dieting too much, you can actually make your body fat go up while your body weight is going down and your muscle mass is going down. I had that happen twice to me. And interestingly enough, I had it happen on camera. They were doing a, uh, a program for me on PM Magazine. Well, you may remember PM Magazine. It was a national uh, program of a, a lot of viewership. <laughs> And they were doing a program on me, and they went in to see me be weighed there uh, right before the contest. And it was interesting that the guy, from the, they asked the technician, what was my body fat? My body fat actually gone up. That was really? a hell of a thing to do on national television. Yeah. And it turned out that show was to be shown on the day that Ronald Reagan was shot. Okay. So that, that, that show never got aired, which was rather disappointing. And then later on, Bill Reynolds came out to Albuquerque, uh, and I, I, got, I went and got weighed again before we were, were going to take some pictures, and my body fat went up again. And, and, and boy, he thought that was the funniest thing coming and going, but it was just a matter of pushing myself a little bit too much, cutting back on, on the food intake a little bit too much, and of course, I was cutting back on the water too, and of course, the, the muscle and your in your the water the muscle is made of, of mainly water. So right. Cut back on water is going to reduce the right. And reduce the your muscle that's showing up in the test. So you can diet so severely that your body and your body fat goes up, not down. I think people don't realize that. And as you're getting ready for a contest or photos, you're getting right down there to the nub of what. Uh, of your of your essential fat level, so the body rebels. So the idea is to do it very very slowly, so you don't set off any of these alarm bells in your body, which set off the evolutionary process of protecting your fat and adding fat, so you'll be ready for the next famine. Very very interesting. I I uh, my girlfriend was telling the same thing. She her weight's up, and she feels fat, and she's not. She's very lean. She's very hard, but she works out. She 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 runs every day, and her diet is very limited to vegetables and very, very low calories. And I'm thinking maybe she's not getting enough calories and the calories are just not enough where she's storing more fat. So that, you, you, it's a fine line there, what you're saying. You gotta know your body, you gotta know how to balance it out, otherwise it's gonna play tricks with you. That's exactly right. My, my idea coming into a photo shoot or a contest is you should have that body fat down a couple of weeks in advance, so you don't have to worry about the body fat. You're already lean. Yeah. All you gotta do is, is worry about getting the cuts to come out, getting them, getting the water, as we talked about before, right. in the muscle cells, not under the skin. And you do that by what we just finished talking about. Yes. By water, right. water and getting the sodium out of your system. Before we close out on this, there's, there's a few more questions. I've been getting a lot of emails, and I'm sure you do as well, from men in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, more so lately than ever, and especially when I have you on, because a lot of these men have trained in the past, They've taken time off. They're coming back into the gym. They want to begin again. They don't know how to train. They don't know about diet, uh, and they're eating all wrong. And it is harder as you get older. I mean, at my age um, now, I can stay relatively in decent shape, but I don't see the cuts I had 20 years ago, but I don't diet like I did 20 years ago either. You know, I'll have desserts and I'll have little things, but for the most part, throughout the day, I eat like we did back in the day. 
But your body does change as you get older, and it, sometimes you just got to shock it. And, and what are, I want to know your feelings on that. Well, I think shocking your body is probably a bad idea because it sets off these alarm bells. And I think one of the things that, and we may have talked about this last time, I'm not sure, but as you get older, it, it's your fast twitch muscle fibers that, that go down. Mm -hmm. And most people, when they don't exercise, they don't train those fibers. And the fibers that aren't used are the ones that go away. So they're... They're, they're losing their muscle mass, and they are, if their body weight stays the same, that muscle mass is replaced with fat. Okay. So it's, it's important um, for an older person to make sure that they're doing high-intensity training, obviously being careful. And when you do high-intensity training, you have to rest longer between workouts. I so see. I mean, yeah, we did discuss that. I only do one weight workout, one hard weight workout, one hard aerobic workout a week. I think that's important. An older, older trainer needs to focus more on on rest between workouts and also being uh, being active. Also, uh, of course, it takes a while to get to that stage. So if you haven't been training, you got to go back and build up gradually again. Yeah. But I I, I don't. I'm not sure what you mean by shocking, but I don't. Well, think shocking, no, right? I, I don't mean shocking. I'm saying that your body. My body expects really the same thing every day. It knows I'm going to get up. It knows I'm going to eat. It knows I'm going to go to the gym. It knows I'm going to do exercises. I've been doing it for so many years. If I take a day off, for example, I take Sunday off, my body rebels on me. It gets tired and sluggish and doesn't want to do anything. It's used to being worked, like a workhorse. So I'm thinking that I should go, well, I do this with my workouts. I'll change my workout around so my body's not used to it. So it's, used, it's not used to doing the same thing. I'll do something different. I was told years ago, why don't you change your diet around too? Instead of fish all the time, you just switch to meat or switch to chicken. That's why I'm talking about shocking your body. But I don't know, I'm comfortable with the way I do things now. So I, I, um, I stay in, the, in what makes it work for me. A lot of guys don't know what to do. I think the thing that most older trainers are not focusing on and remembering is the overload principle. You have, and, and that's what you're, maybe what you're talking about on shocking your system. You've got to present your body with a more of a, of a challenge. Yes. So you're so when you when I when I prepare for a workout, I plan the workout. I always plan to do a little bit more than I did before. So I'm challenging the body. The body will not respond unless it's forced to respond. Right. The body just does, and the minimum possible. If all you do is drink a cup of tea, it's going to preserve the muscles to drink a cup of tea. Yeah. You have to push yourself. And when you get to the point where, where you're up, where you're hitting a sticking point, you don't want to just keep pushing that. You do what you said. You change a little bit. Yeah. Change the exercise. Change the rep range. And then you work back up again. But every workout, you're constantly trying to think about how to move forward. So every workout is a positive forward yes. challenge. Yes, and that definitely. goes for the, for the aerobic exercises as well as the as well as the weight training, that's why that's why intervals are so important and, and they've become so so popular recently. And, and the studies are showing that intervals, high intensity, is much more effective than a steady state exercise, which is what most people do. And they're just running at, at, a, at a moderate pace for a longer period of time. It's better to go harder and shorter. Makes sense to me. How about the reps? Higher reps are better nowadays. No. <laughs> I think you need to, the main thing is you need to vary the reps. So I do too. In shocking your body, as you said, or doing something different. I generally go between 8 and 20, but you don't want to do 20 all the time. You should change around. So you can work up, start out with the 20 reps, go up as far as you can, you drop back to 12, raise the weight some more until you top out, go up to 8, then come back to the 20 again. So you're constantly changing. Mm -hmm. You get tired of an exercise. Your body pretty much kind of just adjusts. It's going to be ready to do that exercise with the amount of weight you're using. Right. But you've got to give it a new challenge, a little, little bit, change the angle a little bit, and start again, always pushing forward, but always trying to think of a workout. I want to always succeed in the workout. I try to never fail. So it's the, the, the planning. The, what you're going to do, you have to be realistic in your goals. You want to set goals that you know you're going to fail, you want to set yourself up for, for, for success. I Absolutely. I, I know that today I was told, I, 
well, my girlfriend like, don't go to the gym. You had surgery on your head yesterday. You need to rest. You need to get some. Well, I, I, I went to the gym. I did the bike. And then I did some bicep tries. So I thought, I'm not going to go heavy. I'm going to do reps. So I did like 15, 20 reps, four or five sets, and worked my way down to about 12, and then moved on. I did it for a different thing. I didn't go heavy. And I actually really felt it really well. It felt really good. It was something entirely different that I haven't done in a while, and I'm okay. So I think what you're saying, like the 20 reps and working way down and coming up back on your weight, that's pretty much what I used to do old school, and it works really well. And it's, it's a new challenge all the time. Yes, and I, I agree with that, that you did something, but you didn't do something that's going to be, uh, you know, set, back, set you back after the surgery or not no. going to work. No. But I, I, then my last weekend, I, I pulled my shoulder. I've had a sore shoulder for a long time. But I went ahead and did my Tuesday workout, but I just kind of worked around that and tried to figure out things that I could do yeah. without hurting the shoulder. I didn't want to set myself back further. Yeah. But I didn't want to not do the workout. I, if I miss the workout, I feel like I'm, I, I'm doing something that I don't want to do. But you can always adjust, do it, but do it in a way that's going to be a positive impact and not a negative impact. Yeah, I won't sit home with an injury. I, I go and I work around this like you do. I always find a different way of doing something that can get through it. And by the time I leave, you say, you know, I feel pretty darn good. Even with this head thing today, I feel pretty good that I went. I mean, it's sore, but the circulation kicked in and helped you heal quicker for sure. So um, it didn't do any damage. Yes, one thing I've been doing with my shoulder is constantly moving it because I want, I'm want trying to move it in a way that doesn't cause pain, but does bring circulation, which promotes the healing. Exactly. The, 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 the damaged cells and brings the blood and the nutrients to cure it. And I think that's that's very important. So you don't want to be immobile. People, I think, don't appreciate that. They hurt themselves. They think, well, I'm just going to sit down and no. wait, till it cures, wait till it clears up, but it's going to take a long time. Well, that's funny. I, I, I need to close this, but I want to say I went to my orthopedic surgeon. Uh, my left shoulder is completely frozen. The, the, if you see where it rotates, it's all arthritis and white fused bone and all that. And so when I work out, my trap takes over a little bit. So he says, how do you work out? I said, I do presses, I do laterals, I do everything. He says, it's amazing that you can do that, and, and it's good that you do that. You're not sitting home letting it get worse because it'll get stiff and stiff and stiff and never never use it. So he says, keep going to the gym, keep doing what you're doing because that's why you're able to be mobile. And I totally believe that. Yes, sir. The body, the body's made to move, and, you, and even though you have an injury, or and I have my weakness in this left shoulder, but I've continued to train it. I know my doctor at the Cooper Clinic said that my... My rehab has been fantastic because he knows there's some real weakness there, but I continue to use it. Absolutely. You have to keep keep moving. Use keep it or it lose it. it. Your way. Use it or lose it, Clarence. Thank you so much for being on today. Can we promote some of your stuff right now so they know where to find you? Absolutely. Uh, we just posted our our, our we update on, on the website, cbass.com. Okay. That's where we posted the article that we talked about at the first of this this segment. And uh, we have two uh, success stories that I think people work with. Now, one success story, do you remember Deborah Diana? Sure. Uh, we, we recently communicated, so I have a, a story about her showing her in her, in her competitive uh, uh, condition and showing her now and kind of she, she tells about her philosophy of life and training I think it's a very good piece sure and another fellow who uh, knew that I've had a hip replacement and, and his hip was bothering him and the doctor was thinking he might have to have a hip replacement and asked me how would he go about training to avoid that so I wrote an article about that explaining things you might do and then there was a study that came out that, that found that people that train, uh, and they, 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 they followed them, people that, a group that trained, the people that, that didn't, they followed them for six years, and they found that the people that trained uh, were 44% less likely or less likely to have to have the, the hip replacement. But the other thing about it is that you need to train before you have the hip replacement so you don't lose your muscle mass, your muscles don't shorten, yeah. you don't get an uneven gait, so you're going in there, everything's out of, out of whack. So if you the better shape you can go into the surgery, the better shape you're going to come out of it. Absolutely. So I'm believer of that. I, 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 when I had my hip replacement, I was walking the first day, I was out of the hospital. The next day, I was going up and downstairs within the week. 
I think that was partly because I was in such good shape going into the surgery. That's totally why. That, that, it's, I, that's, a, that's a plus. I had double quads with her. I would throw my quads off wrestling, and I trained hard. Extensions and curls, extension curls, and when they put them back together, I couldn't walk. I couldn't. I had, couldn't bend my knees for six weeks. I was in leg braces, but I went to the gym every day in a walker. And I had upper body, and you know your body trains, but other people, other parts of your body benefit from your training every, everywhere. So I healed them half the time before I knew it. I was working legs again. It's just a matter of being in shape. It helps a lot. So we'd like people to come see our website. I think a lot of people don't know all of the great stuff that's on there. Oh, they gotta go. Cbass.com. Cbass.com. I'll post that. You've got a. a ton of information on there and it, I advise anybody to go to your website and see what you have plus you, your tons of photos which are really excellent and uh, I love talking to you just I learned so much thanks very much it's great to be with you thank you Clarence we'll pick up another time we'll do some more stay I'm healthy good. stay healthy and stay ripped you too okay buddy thank you bye bye Com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.